Back in 1998, Jeep laid the foundation for the modern performance SUV with this, the Grand Cherokee 5.9 Limited. And although the 5.9 Limited was revolutionary in its concept, its actual formula was quite simple. Jeep simply took the existing Grand Cherokee, gave it a bigger motor and a much nicer interior, and voila, the 5.9 Limited was born. And it's a real shame that Jeep doesn't make anything like this today. Oh yeah, they do. This is the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, and it's Jeep's modern rendition of the 5.9 Limited. And since I have both cars here, I thought it might be fun to do a little comparison. Since these are both muscle Jeeps with performance at their core, I thought we'd start with the engines. The 5.9 Limited is powered by a 5.9 liter V8 that makes 245 horsepower and 345 pound-feet of torque. When Jeep decided to send off this generation of Grand Cherokee with a high-performance model, they actually had to raid the Chrysler parts bin to find this V8. The biggest engine you could get in the Grand Cherokee before this was a 5.2 liter V8. This motor actually came out of a Dodge Ram pickup truck. Like the 5.9 Limited, the Trackhawk is all about its engine. This is a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that makes 707 horsepower and 645 pound-feet of torque. In fact, that makes this the most powerful production SUV on sale today. History has a funny way of repeating itself, and that's exactly what happened here. When Jeep set off to make a super SUV, they didn't have an engine of their own, so they turned to Dodge once again. This is the same motor Dodge uses in the Charger and Challenger Hellcat models. Of course, it'd be rude of me to talk about these V8s without letting you hear them, so here they are all their glory. And there's more similarities with the drivetrains. The 5.9 Limited used a permanent four-wheel drive system and had a limited slip rear differential to keep all of this power in check. It used a four-speed automatic transmission, but not the normal one. It has a beefed-up version of the four-speed that they used in the regular Grand Cherokees. The Trackhawk also uses a permanent four-wheel drive system, but there's no lever to engage high or low range. It's all done electronically now. And this also has an automatic transmission, but it's got double the gears. This is an eight-speed auto versus the four speed in this but like the 59 limited it's been beefed up to handle all the extra grunt of this motor even though these muscle Grand Cherokees are separated by more than two decades, they actually have a lot in common when it comes to exterior styling. Now, up front, you'll notice they both have this seven-slot Jeep grille, of course, but look closely, you'll notice they both have the same kind of mesh inserts to let you know that these are the really sporty models. Over here, the Grand Cherokee 5.9 Limited had these hood vents. They were fully functional, and they were kind of its signature design item. It's one of the ways you can tell this apart from a regular Grand Cherokee. And Jeep managed to incorporate that on the Trackhawk. It's got these cool-looking vents. They're kind of Viper in style, but really they're pretty similar to the 5.9 Limited. You'll find more similarities in profile. You'll notice that the 5.9 Limited is monochromatic. It's kind of all just one color, which isn't that unique today, but it was back in 1998. A lot of SUVs had black body cladding to tell you they're really rough and ready to go off road. Now, modern day, that's less common, but you can still get a Grand Cherokee with black plastic fender flares, but this doesn't. Like the 5.9 Limited, it's all monochromatic. The 5.9 Limited also had a couple unique things going for it compared to the regular Grand Cherokee. It had more aggressive side sills and it had a lower profile roof rack to give it a sportier appearance. Now Jeep's kind of done the same thing with the modern Trackhawk. It's got a unique lower side sill for a more aggressive look compared to the regular Grand Cherokee. It also has these really sleek looking roof rails. Jeep even employed a similar badging strategy on these two vehicles. They both say Grand Cherokee on the doors. That's normal for a Grand Cherokee, but they have a little unique badge to let you know you're looking at something special. Over here it says 5.9 Limited, and over here it says Supercharged. One place where styling has marched on is the wheels. Over here we have this five-spoke design finished in bright silver, while the new Trackhawk has these multi-spoke wheels that are finished in matte black to make it look really sporty. There's also a huge difference in size. The Trackhawk uses 
20 inch wheels, whereas the 5.9 Limited only has 16 inch wheels. In fact, the front brake discs on the Trackhawk are nearly as large as the wheels on the 5.9 Limited. And the tires are also massively different. These are only 225 in width, which isn't much more than you'd find on a Toyota Corolla, whereas these are 295. It's more like something you'd find on a supercar. And finally, we move on to the rear end styling of the Grand Cherokees, where you'll find a few more similarities. If you notice on the passenger side tailgate of both vehicles, you'll find unique badging. On the newer model, it says Trackhawk to let you know this is a Trackhawk. But the 5.9 Limited, for some reason, Jeep didn't put the model name, but rather the engine size. It says 5.9 liter. Another thing these cars have in common is something you can't see. These can both tow, so you can use them as real SUVs. The 5.9 Limited can tow 5,000 pounds because this is so powerful, it can tow 7,200 pounds. So if you wanted to hook up a boat to these and go to the lake, you could. Now, since these are both performance SUVs, they have performance exhaust systems, but they couldn't be more different in their approach. Since the Trackhawk is a modern vehicle, it kind of has this rear diffuser with an integrated quad exhaust system that looks really high performance. Over here, the Jeep 5.9 5.9 Limited just got a single exhaust outlet that was slightly bigger than the regular Grand Cherokees. Obviously, there's been a lot of innovation in the auto industry over the last 20 years, so the interior styling isn't really similar between these two vehicles, but the overall philosophy behind the interior design is the same. And that philosophy was to take the basic Grand Cherokee's interior and just make it a lot nicer. After all, the 5.9 Limited wasn't just a performance model, but also the flagship of the Jeep lineup, so the interior had to be luxurious. And so Jeep lined the interior of the 5.9 Limited with old world luxury, basically soft leather and wood accents everywhere you look. But the 5.9 Limited also had some decent tech for the day. Standard features included a premium audio system, automatic headlights, heated seats, and a memory driver's seat. Even though the 5.9 Limited came standard with pretty much all the bells and whistles you could think of, there were still two available options. One was a trailer hitch and the other was a sunroof. Now, as legend has it, of the 14,000 or so 5.9 Limited's Jeep made, only 500 managed to escape the factory without the sunroof. Now, interestingly, Jeep recalled this generation of Grand Cherokee for a fire risk involving the gas tank, which is located right near their rear bumper. And Jeep's fix for that was to install a trailer hitch. So even if a 5.9 Limited didn't leave the factory with the optional trailer hitch, it probably has it now. Like the 5.9 Limited, the Trackhawk is just a normal Grand Cherokee, only a lot nicer. There are aluminum and carbon fiber accents, bolstered sports seats with Alcantara and leather, and then there's more leather on the steering wheel, the armrest, and the dashboard, all with luxurious looking stitching. And of course, plenty of touches to let you know this is no ordinary Grand Cherokee. But since the Trackhawk is based on a modern vehicle, it seems like a spaceship compared to the 5.9 Limited. This has pretty much all the modern tech features you'd expect out of a vehicle. It's got adaptive cruise control, it's got a big infotainment screen, and a lot of nice convenience features like cooled seats. Of course, you can get all that stuff on just a normal Grand Cherokee, but this Trackhawk model has a few things that you won't find on just your regular V6 Elite Special Grand Cherokee. In the Trackhawk center console, you'll find a knob for its different drive mode. There's kind of the usual stuff you'd expect, but if you turn it all the way to the left, it puts the vehicle in track mode. And if you want to get really serious, there's a launch button that engages the vehicle's launch control. And if you dive into the Trackhawk's infotainment system, you'll find an app called Performance Pages. And within that app, you'll find several sub apps that help you keep an eye on what's going on with your super SUV. You can do things like see how much horsepower you're generating anytime or check out on all your gauges so you know just how hot your air intake temperature is or your trans temp or air fuel ratio. And if you really want to get into things, there's even a dyno mode. But enough talking about these super SUVs, let's get them out on the road and see how they drive. All right, so here we go in the fastest SUV 1998 had to offer. Now, the first thing you notice behind the wheel of the 5.9 Limited is just how comfortable it is. We've been conditioned to think that powerful vehicles have to be sporty with a race tune suspension, but it's just not the case. This is just such a comfortable vehicle that happens to also be fast. These seats on their own, they're ridiculous. The leather is so soft and they're so overstuffed. And then the suspension on this is just from the normal Grand Cherokee, so it's not tuned to go around a track fast. It's tuned to be comfortable and go off roads. So there's a lot of suspension travel and it's just supremely comfortable to drive. Now, although this is nice to drive around town with this cushy suspension and powerful engine, it's not really great on a back road. Like I said earlier, this has the standard suspension and brakes from the normal Grand Cherokee. So it kind of leans through all the turns, plus it has solid axles front and rear. So when you hit a bump, it kind of upsets everything. So it's not a sporty vehicle to drive, but it does feel along the lines of a GT car it's just 
supremely comfortable and powerful and lovely to drive on like a road trip or if you're commuting to work other than the gas mileage, which is pretty abysmal. All right, so here we go in the 707 horsepower Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. I've actually been driving this vehicle around for about a week, and I would say there are two things that have really impressed me about it. One is obviously the speed. This thing is just tremendously fast, and not just from a standstill. If you're on the highway and you need to get around somebody, you press this gas pedal and it is instantaneous. You are suddenly just flying down the highway. It's just amazing that a vehicle this big and this tall can move that quickly. Now, the second thing has to do with speed, but rather kind of the lack of it. When you're just driving around normally around town like I am now, it's surprisingly docile. It doesn't feel like this high-strung beast that just has to go fast all the time. You can drive it around normally. and It's not really complaining at all. And when you're off the gas, it's relatively quiet. I mean, you get a little bit of road noise and it's got gigantic wheels on it and you get some engine noise, but really for being a 707 horsepower super SUV, it's remarkably quiet and comfortable in here. Now, obviously comfort is a relative term. This isn't as cushy as a regular Grand Cherokee, but I do think the ride is pretty plush for a vehicle with these kind of capabilities. It's firm and you do feel the bumps, but it never jolts or upsets the cabin. And these seats are actually surprisingly comfortable too. They have a good bit of bolstering, but it's not so aggressive that you feel like you're being squeezed all the time. So even though this is a hyper SUV that can accelerate as fast as a McLaren, it's really not bad to drive on a daily basis. Even though the Trackhawk's capable of trundling around around as a normal commuter vehicle, you'll want to really tap into the 707 horsepower because it's just so intoxicating to use. I find the best mode for it, at least around town, is the sport mode in auto. It's just a little slow to downshift. It's not as crisp. And at sport mode, it really hits the sweet spot. If you go to track, it's great if you want to drive aggressively, but it'll hold the gears longer and you kind of look ridiculous driving through town with the RPMs kind of screaming even at low speeds. So I find the sport is the best and it's really got this responsive throttle. It'll hold the gears a little longer than normal. It's just the way to go. This sport mode is perfect. It goes without saying since this car is 20 years newer than the 5.9, but this just has so many more features and amenities. I've got streaming audio in this. I've got adaptive cruise control for them on the highway. It's just a modern vehicle. It's so nice because I've got this huge horsepower under hood, but I can still just use it as an everyday car with kind of everyday luxuries that I'd like to have. And it's just a really nice package, this Trackhawk. And so that's the Grand Cherokee 5.9 Limited and the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, two super Jeeps separated by two decades. Now, despite that age gap, I'm actually surprised about how similar these vehicles are, both in terms of styling and overall concept. Of course, the differences are a little more glaring when you start to get into technology and overall performance. With a zero to 60 time of 3.5 seconds, the Trackhawk is roughly as quick as a McLaren F1. And with a zero to 60 time of seven seconds, the 5.9 Limited it is just about as quick as an average mid-sized sedan. And then there's a little subject of suspension and brakes. The Trackhawk has a race-tuned suspension with massive brakes, and the 5.9 Limited has the standard suspension and brakes from a normal Grand Cherokee, so it really doesn't drive any differently. And then there's a little matter of technology. The 5.9 Limited doesn't have any, and this Trackhawk has quite a lot. Just think about your cell phone in 1998 versus 2019. That's a pretty big difference. If you had an unlimited budget and had to choose between these two vehicles, obviously you'd pick the Trackhawk. It's just a better vehicle with a lot more technology and a lot more performance, not to mention all the latest safety features. But we can't forget the fact that the 5.9 Limited blazed the path for a high-performance Jeep Grand Cherokee. In fact, without the 5.9 Limited, it's possible this Trackhawk might not exist at all, but it does, and I have 707 reasons to be thankful for that. And this is what launch control looks like from inside the Trackhawk. Oh my word! Oh, the poo came out. Oh.